Now, I'm no rocket scientist, but these start hearing ones seem virtually identical to these Bose hearing aids from Lexi. The Start Hearing One is one of the newest over-the-counter hearing aids on the market sold by a company called Start Hearing. Now, if this is the first time that you're hearing about them, you're not alone, but you may be familiar with their parent company, Starkey Hearing Technologies. Start Hearing not only offers their over-the-counter hearing aids, but they also act as a third-party administrator contracting with insurance companies to handle their hearing aid benefits. Of course, for the purposes of this video, I will be doing a detailed review of the Start Hearing One over-the-counter hearing aids in see how they stack up against other over-the-counter hearing aids currently available on the market. Just remember, over-the-counter hearing aids are intended for adults with perceived mild to moderate hearing loss, and your ability to receive benefit from them depends on how well you can program them to your hearing loss prescription. And if you do not get benefit with over-the-counter hearing aids that you try, make sure that you see a hearing care professional so they can help. Also, if you have any of the following red flags, make sure that you consult immediately with an audiologist or a physician who specializes in the ears because it could be a sign of a serious medical condition. These red flags include visible congenital or traumatic deformity of the ears, history of active drainage from either ear within the previous 90 days, visible evidence of significant earwax accumulation or foreign body in the ear canal, pain or discomfort in the ear, acute or chronic dizziness, history of sudden or rapidly progressive hearing loss within the previous 90 days, or unilateral hearing loss of sudden or recent onset within the previous 90 days as well. I should mention that while the Start Hearing Ones are considered over-the-counter hearing aids, you can only purchase them over-the-counter from a hearing care professional. This is both good and bad, because while you can purchase them over-the-counter, you have to go into a hearing aid clinic rather than just purchasing them online. On the other hand, it is kind of a benefit because if you end up struggling with these devices, you actually can have local support if you want it. I did try to use the clinic locator on the StartHearing.com website, but it does not appear to be working, which means that your best bet is to find a hearing aid clinic in your local area that dispenses Starkey hearing aids. All right, now that you have some kind of idea of where you can actually purchase these devices, let's see what they look like. Honestly, when I first opened the box to take a look at these, I was surprised because they look virtually identical to the Lexi B1 over-the-counter hearing aids powered by Bose. Everything from the size, the shape, the construction, the push buttons, the receiver wires and domes, they are nearly identical. I mean, they're even just as uncomfortable as the Lexi B ones as well. When you take a look at them, you can see how the tip of that receiver angles almost directly up. That is extremely uncomfortable because it pushes up against the top of my ear canal. On the other hand, it does help aid in retention. So this hearing aid typically is not going to be the type of hearing aid that falls out of your ears. There is a difference in price though. The Start Hearing Ones retail at $899 for a pair, whereas the Lexi B Ones retail for $849 for a pair if there's no discount codes involved. But you actually get some additional features for that extra 50 bucks. Inside the box, you get the hearing aids, small, medium, and large open and closed ear tips, a pack of wax guards, a hearing aid brush, a pack of size 312 batteries, and a carrying case. Yes, that is correct. These only come in a disposable battery option using a size 312 disposable battery. They do not have a lithium rechargeable battery option, although I do speculate that in the next few years, perhaps they could come out with the Start Hearing 2s that are their lithium rechargeable option. The receiver wires come in a standard length of two, but you can contact customer service at Start Hearing for you to get a shorter length length wire or a longer length wire, don't try to go on their website and get accessories there because their website is virtually useless. All right, let me go ahead and show you what these look like when they are inside of my ears. They actually fit pretty well behind my ears. Like I said, the domes that are on the ends of the receiver tips actually hurt my ear when I put them in. Now, one way you can kind of combat this is to order a longer length wire, but honestly, I can't even wear that. That, that is extremely painful inside of my left ear. This one is not bad. This one actually feels pretty good. So this is what 
it looks like right there. And like I said, you can get a longer length wire or a shorter length wire. You just wanna make sure that that hearing aid is tucked nicely behind your ear without it elevating it above it and without it pulling it forward of your ear. These devices do amplify sound right out of the box at their default amplification settings. There is not a hearing test that you take with these particular over-the-counter hearing aids, but you can make adjustments to them. To make these adjustments, you can use the push buttons on the back of each hearing aid to either increase volume, reduce volume, or change between your default programs. They also have their Start Hearing app, which allows you to use an Android phone or an Apple phone to make these customizations to your devices. But before I get into how you can self-adjust your hearing aids, let me go ahead and cover a little bit about the Bluetooth connectivity. If you have an Android phone like this one, you can only use the Start Hearing app to connect to your hearing aids to make adjustments. You cannot do any other types of streaming, whether it's music, podcasts, YouTube videos, or phone calls. However, if you have an Apple device, not only can you use the Start Hearing app, but you can also use the Bluetooth Low Energy to stream audio directly from your iPhone into both of your hearing aids. Just keep in mind that when you are talking on the phone, you have to have your iPhone with you because it is the microphone of the iPhone that picks up your voice and sends it to the person on the other end of the line. Another cool thing that you can do with your iPhone is activate the live listen feature. This is a remote microphone feature. All you have to do is toggle it on, set your phone down somewhere or close to the person that you want to hear. It will take their voice, get picked up by the microphone, and send their voice wirelessly into both of your hearing aids. While the audio connection using this Bluetooth Low Energy for the iPhone is a little bit spotty, it is not a whole lot different than prescription level hearing aids that use Bluetooth Low Energy as well. The nice thing about the streaming is that you can actually go into the Start Hearing app and make adjustments and that will adjust the sound quality of the stream as well. Now once you connect your hearing aids to the app, you'll see that you have four preset bass programs including home, restaurant, outside, and music. You will also see your volume bars on the bottom of the screen that range from 0 to 12. Under the Sound Options tab, you can activate a Whisper Boost feature or Noise Reduction feature and either increase or decrease brightness, which are your high frequencies, or increase or decrease fullness, which are your low frequencies. If you make an adjustment with any of these, it will save your sound options inside of whatever bass program you were adjusting for. Now you might be thinking, that's great having Bluetooth connectivity and the ability to self-adjust your hearing aids inside of the app, but how do these over-the-counter devices actually function from a hearing aid standpoint? Fortunately, I was once again able to use my assistant, Bree, who has a mild to moderate hearing loss, to see how well I could program these devices to her NAL NL2 hearing loss prescription using real ear measurements. Measurement. Now, if you are not familiar with real ear measurement, then I highly recommend you check out this video right here because real ear measurement is the only way to verify if your over-the-counter hearing aids are capable of meeting your mild to moderate hearing loss prescription. The basic concept of real ear measurement is to measure the amount of amplification that you are receiving from your hearing aids inside of your ear canals and adjust it to match your hearing loss prescription. To do this, we insert probe microphone tubes into Breeze ear canals along with the start hearing one over-the-counter hearing aids and played a calibrated sound from a speaker in front of her. Initially, we wanted to measure her ear canal resonance, which is indicated by the solid pink curve. This is the natural amplification effect that everybody gets from the unique shape of their ear canal. The hash mark pink curve is the NAL NL2 prescription for her mild to moderate hearing loss. If any of the solid lines that we measure during real ear measurement are below the hash mark line, we are under amplifying sound. And if we are above the hash mark line, we are over amplifying sound. As you can see, due to Bree's hearing loss, her ear canal resonance is well below her prescriptive targets. Next, I wanted to measure the default settings of the Start Hearing One over the counter hearing aids, which are indicated by the solid red curves without making any self programming adjustments yet. To start, we're using the open ear tips on these devices. While this does increase the amount of sound she receives, she is still significantly under amplified in certain areas and starting to be over amplified in others. Next, I measured the minimum volume setting, which is indicated by the solid turquoise curve. The fact that it almost directly overlaps with her ear canal resonance pink curve indicates that this basically mutes the devices. 
Next, I measured maximum volume, indicated by the solid green curve, which allowed us to greatly exceed her prescriptive targets through the mid-frequencies, despite still being below her prescriptive targets in the higher frequencies. Next, we went through the customization screen and checked how much high frequencies would increase by adjusting max brightness using the solid turquoise curve, which did give us more amplification above 3000 Hz. Naturally, after checking max brightness, we wanted to check out the max fullness setting indicated by the solid green curve and didn't show much of an increase in the low frequencies. This is not particularly surprising considering that we were using open domes that allow low frequencies to leak out of the ear canal. Then we checked minimum brightness with the turquoise curve again, which did lower the high frequencies a bit, followed by minimum fullness with the green curve again, which showed no change from the default amplification settings. Next, I had to check the soft level compression settings to see if soft speech was being amplified enough to make it audible again. For this, we once again used the solid turquoise curve. This indicated that soft speech was significantly under amplified at the default settings. But since there was a whisper boost feature, we were able to see if we could increase this soft level compression without increasing amplification for all sounds, which we measured using the solid pink curve. From what I can tell during this measurement, this did increase soft level speech by a few decibels from 1000 Hz and above, but still not enough to meet the prescriptive targets for soft level speech. I also measured the restaurant, outdoors, and music setting presets, but there was not a whole lot of difference between all three of them, so I spared you the comparison. However, the most important thing that we needed to measure is whether or not we could self-adjust these hearing aids to match Breeze NAL NL2 hearing loss prescription precisely. The closest prescriptive match using the open ear tips is indicated by the solid green curves. As you can see, I was not particularly successful in matching Bree's prescriptive targets, even though I was attempting to do so. Even though it is slightly better than the initial default settings, we are still not matching her prescription very well. Due to this, we switched to the closed domes that were included inside of the packaging and re-attempted to match her prescriptive targets using the solid turquoise curve. While this was better than with the open domes, you can see for yourself that we are not perfectly matching the hash mark prescriptive curve. For comparison's sake, here is an example of an optimal prescriptive match using prescription hearing aids with an open dome, which are indicated by the solid purple curves. Finally, we tested the noise reduction capabilities both with noise reduction turned off and again with noise reduction turned on. In the off setting, we measured a five decibel reduction in steady state noise, and with it turned on, it increased the noise reduction by another two decibels to reach seven decibels of noise reduction. Overall, the Start Hearing One over-the-counter hearing aids performed very similar to other over-the-counter hearing aids that I've reviewed already. While we were not able to match Bree's hearing loss prescriptive targets perfectly, we were able to apply some meaningful amplification for a mild to moderate hearing hearing loss as long as we used a closed dome. Could they have done better? The answer to that is clearly yes, and quite frankly, I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't considering that Start Hearing is a division of Starkey Hearing Technologies. Although it seems like Starkey had virtually nothing to do with designing these over-the-counter hearing aids except for maybe the Bluetooth feature. With all that said, these over-the-counter hearing aids could be exactly what you're looking for if you're looking to self-treat your perceived mild to moderate hearing loss. So if you'd like to check these devices out for yourself, all you have to do is contact a hearing aid clinic that dispenses Starkey hearing aids, give them a call and see if they can mail a set to you, or to see if you can go in and pick them up. Keep in mind that they do come with a 30-day return window, so if you try them and you do not like them, you can return them for a refund. I will put a link in the description to my hearingup.com website that has more information about how you can get a pair of these devices for yourself.